Hey y'all and welcome to a new Terrain Generation video. So this is the first video that I do about Terrain Generation using only the GPU. So we're going to start from a GGL material object, we're going to modify it a bit and we're going to create uh, a terrain, so something that looks like uh, uh, some kind of ground uh, with some mountains and water and stuff. And we're going to do this completely on the GPU. So without using any matrices at all, which makes the whole thing very performant for uh, for our computers. So we can get high frame rate, uh, high resolution and so on. So let's dive into it. Alright, so let's start. First of all, we need our JIT world. So I'm going to find it in my snippets. World well, plus the camera, there it is. I'm going to change the name of the world because I have an instance of this uh, of a JIT world with the same name in another open patch. So I cannot have both at the same time. So I'm going to change the world in something like Terrain GPU or something like that. I have to use the same name also for the camera. Right, and that's it. We don't need the size of the window. So that's basically it. Great. So what we're going to do is to use a GGL BFG object to generate a noise that we will use as the uh, amplitude for our terrain. So we will generate the terrain based on the noise, which is uh, generated in the GPU, so it's very efficient. Great, so let's create a texture to trigger the GGL BFG object that draws to terrain GPU. Uh, I'm going to give it dimension uh, 1024 by 1024, so pretty big. The biggest the dimension, the more detailed will be our noise, so the more detailed will be our terrain. Great, so I want to trigger this at every frame, so I'm going to receive up my metro here that exits from the JIT world at every frame, and I'm going to trigger this at every frame. So let's check with the GP window if we are creating a noise. Yes, we are. I want to change the type of noise, so I'm going to give it a basis, and I'm going to choose the fractal.multi dot hybrid as a noise type great all right so i have to give it also a drawing uh, context which is our terrain gpu i'm going to give it a zoom of like three or something great uh, so we zoom into our noise um, i want to kind of move this noise so i'm going to use jit time for to generate uh, like continuous numbers and this is triggered by the bang that comes at every frame so it's perfect to animate our visuals and I'm going to say prepend uh, offset. So we're going to move only the X component of the offset. And I'm going to attach this here. So great, we have like a running noise, uh, which we will use to kind of move our terrain. Great. And then I have to use this in conjunction to a GGL material and uh, terrain GPU. This draws to terrain GPU. And I want to use the height map mode of the GGL material VTF normals. So this means that this is going to generate an height map on our object and is also going to automatically create the normals for the distorted uh, new object. So the distorted new object is going to be a GGL mesh which draws to terrain GPU. Why a mesh? Because we need to uh, give it the attribute uh, auto bit tangents one otherwise the normals will not work because of how the algorithm to calculate the normals work. Uh, great, so we can attach this here. Now we just need to fill this GGL mesh with some uh, buffers inputs, so vertices, texture coordinates, and so on. And we can get those from a GGL grid shape object uh, with shape uh, plane, because we want to have a plane which is going to be distorted by the height map. And we're going to give it like dimensions 1024 by 1024. So we will basically have a, a single vertex for every um, pixel of our noise. So this is going to be pretty detailed. I'm going to give it automatic zero and I'm going to give it matrix. Whoops. And I'm going to give it matrix output one. So now this is output in the matrix when we bang it. I'm going to attach a bang to it. Great. So now the buffers uh, contain this object, went to the GGL mesh, which recreated the mesh itself, plus is connected, is connected to the GGL material. So we have basically our plane. Let me actually attach load bang object to that. So every time we start our patch, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be triggered. Uh, let me save the patch. Good. 
So now I want basically to pass this as the hate map for our GGL mesh. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work just like just right now because, as we can see here, it appears a warning that hate map mode booty f requires rectangle zero on the out on the input texture. So basically, we have to say that the texture that comes out from the GGL BFG object must have rectangle zero. So we can say send output rectangle zero which means this is going to give to the output texture the attribute rectangle zero so this should actually work we are also going to load bang that so every time we start the patch it's going to be like this uh let me destroy that and recreate it let me destroy that and recreate it uh let's check if this is actually working now and apparently is not working let's check why Oh, and I think this is not working because I wrote out a bit tangents, but actually it should be out of tangents one. So let's see. Yeah, now it's working. Great. So mode would you have normals? Right. Um, good. So this could be it. This could be basically it. Let's actually create an artif another light. So GGL light. That draws to the GPU, but of type point, because by default the light that we have is of type uh, directional, uh, and I prefer the results that we can have with a point light. So let me actually set the position to like 0, 3, 0 or something. Right. Uh, let me actually also rotate our shape. So I'm going to rotate the mesh. Rotate XYZ by minus 90, because in this case the normals are pointing toward down so right this should be it great good so this could be actually it with our patch but as you can see it's not really working we're not really seeing the normals the light interacting with the terrain very well it's actually not really working with the normals and that's because it's not because the algorithm inside the ggl material is wrong it's just that uh, i think the normals are kind of too weak to have a real effect on this so we're going to modify the shader now, created by the GGL material in order to make this effect stronger. Right, so let's jump into it. Uh, we have to send to the GGL mesh the message get GL3 shader, right? So this is going to give us the shader generated by the GGL mesh. Now I'm going to copy it, close this thing. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. Going to pass this inside, inside a new file, all right going to going to select glsl uh, as a language great and i'm going to save this file my desktop and i'm going to use as a file type basically material uh, jakes as a file type i'm going to call this file material booty f normals and i'm going to add a toot to distinguish from the file i already created good so perfect now we can load the shader which will give us the same effect as the ggl material object into a ggl shader object and then we are going to not use anymore the ggl material but we're just going to use our custom ggl shader so ggl shader terrain gpu name shady or something and file is going to be the name of the file which i've just created which is called material underscore booty f underscore normals underscore toot dot jxs right so now this has this file inside the file that i've just created right cool so what do we want to modify to have this effort a bit stronger oh first we want to attach the shader to the object so let's go here let's delete the ggl material let's give the shader attribute to our ggl mesh so shader shady let's re-give it some input good now we need to give it a texture which is basically our noise in order to pass the texture to the object and there we got it good so as you can see it's a bit different from the effort uh, we had with the ggl material but we are going to make this look better so right let me actually delete this noise because sometimes it kind of interferes with my screen recording let me actually check if it uh, didn't do it yet and I'm just recording a texture input. No, everything looks good, so we are good to go on. So inside the shader, what we want to go do is to go inside our um, vertex shader, so the first shader that we got inside the JXS file, which starts here after all the parameters declaration, we got our vertex shader. This is all automatically generated by Max when we create the GGL material. 
right? Oh, and of course I'm in GL3, I should have specified that in the beginning, but I'm GL3. Otherwise this will look completely different, in GL2 it will be not working, it will be something else. Right, so I'm in GL3 and we got this shader generated by the GGL material. Uh, there is this filter normal function inside our GGL material. Now what I want to do is to create a float inside this function, call it multiplier or something, and give it like a value of 10.0. The point zero is important on because on Mac is going to give you an error if you create a float and assign it to it an integer. So point zero. Like in Max, when you want to create a float, you add a dot. So I want to use this multiplier here where we have this uh, texture sampling. So basically it's sampling the texture using different steps. So basically taking the derivative of the noise and using it to make the cross product between the derivative and the, the step. So in, the, in this way we get the normal that uh, goes perpendicular to the surface of the new distorted object. So I want to multiply basically every one of those little um, sampled values by our multiplier and I'm going to save and see what happens doesn't happen much and that's because I also want to make the step a bit bigger so this is the value of the step so how, how often um, how far is going to sample the next point I want to make it a bit farther so something like that and boom you can see that now it looks much better I don't know why it's there is this so small value by default but if you modify that it's going to look much better right so we got it. So we can even make it higher, something like 0 0.03, and it looks even more dramatic. Now what we can do, of course, is to, is to create a uniform that we can then modify from our patch. So let's actually do it, create a new param. So param name equal uh, u normal multiplier or something. And this is going to be of type float. By default, we are going to give it the value that we just used, which is 0 0.03. Let's close it. Then we're going to bind it to the vertex shader. So I'm just going to copy one of these uniforms. I'm going to give it the name that we chose. And I'm going to bind it to the vertex shader. Then inside the vertex shader, I'm going to create it as a uniform float. And this is called unormal multiplier. And I'm going to use that here inside of our main function. Instead of this number that we hard coded, I'm just going to uh, use the our uniform value so this is to get the surface filtered normal right so we pass it as the value for that function great so now if we go into our patch basically we can change that by hand so I'm going to prepend param and I'm going to use another prepend to basically past the name of our uniform. I'm going to use a float number to modify this value and uh, let's see what happens. So right, you can, in this way, you can modify the normal value. You can make it extremely dramatic. You can make it a bit less dramatic. Uh, so this is basically the step, step for noise sampling, which basically makes a very big difference on how the normals are going to uh, look like. So how the light interacts with our object. Okay, so that's basically it that's basically it so we could stop here but uh, um i want to introduce how to color this thing so i'm going to go all the way down inside of a shader all the way to the bottom into the um, a fragment shader no actually before i do that i want to go back in the vertex shader and basically i want to pass our height map so the texture that we sample to use as a height map from the vertex shader to the fragment shader so in order to do that we have to put it inside the structure so i'm going to create a new vector for inside the structure that we pass to the fragment shader so this out jit per vertex thing i'm going to call it height map or sample the height map or something sample the height map right and then we are going to uh, go inside the main function and do something like this after the declaration of the texture coordinate we say jit underscore out dot sample height map because this is part of our jit out structure it's going to be equal to texture um our height map this is a uniform value that we get uh, that max automatically created when we passed the texture um when we add the still the ggl material right and i'm going to use these texture coordinates in order to sample it right Great. Um, so now it's going to give me an error because they, um, the 
output uh, structure and the input structure are different so i'm just going to copy that here inside the input structure and uh, in the fragment shader and then it's going to work all right so inside the fragment shader i want to basically use our height map to um, um to basically sample some colors based on the height map so this is our output color our final output color and this is my i don't know like my, my final color vector for final color so this is going to be a mix between uh, a color that i choose i don't know for example red you can be very artistic and create a, a different color and then another color which could be like uh, blue or something it's important to always use float numbers if you are using a float number structure like vec4 and then I'm going to use sample, uh, basically JIT underscore in, because this is our input structure that you can find here at the beginning of our fragment shader. I'm sorry if I'm going so fast, but I don't want that this gets too long because then it takes a lot to edit, basically, and you don't have any more last to, to look at it. So I'm um, sorry, I'm rushing it through it a bit, but you can always stop or even slow down the video. So it should be fine. And then I'm going to just sample the x value of this um, of our height map because it's anyway four components that are all the all the same in um, four planes which are all the same because it's a black and white noise. And then what I'm going to do is to multiply our GGL material color by our final color and let's see what we get. Right. Uh, we get this. So according to this value of our noise, we have a uh, color one or color two. If we want to have an even more kind of neat separation, we can use a smooth step function and say like between 0 0.5 use the previous color and then when it goes above 0 0.6 use the other color and in between the two, these two colors make a smooth transition. So it's going to look a bit more uh, separated but also with this smooth transition we can also make bigger by making the distance between these two numbers bigger. Right. Uh, if it looks a bit not bright enough, we can actually like multiply the final value for like something like two. Uh, we could, of course, also create the uniform to replace those um, hard coded colors and to replace those hard coded multiplier. And I leave this to you as an exercise because by now, if you watch some of my tutorials, you should be able to do that by yourself. It's very easy. We did it already in this tutorial by creating our step thing. Right, so let me try to change a bit the step. Right, we can have like zero normals and then increase the normals thing. And uh, yeah, this looks good. So this was definitely it. It's very small patch, as you can see, the most of the thing is going on inside the, the shader. The cool thing about what we did today is that we created a shader using the GGL material and then we modified it according to what we need. Now, if you're going to add another light or, um, yeah, basically another light, the GGL material is not going to recognize it because it's already being hard-coded. So you have to either create a new GGL material connected to the GGL mesh and then modify it again, or you have to modify it manually by yourself, which is not uh, impossible, actually. Good. So, thank you very much for following. This patch can be downloaded from my Patreon and with a lot of other patches as well. So, I invite you to check it up. Thank you, in any case, uh, so much for following and bearing with me we are through all this madness. And see you soon in the next video. Keep having fun. Ciao.